everybody. This is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations, and I have a tutorial for you today. If you have seen my walkthrough, then you know what we're going to be making. If you haven't, I'm going to put a link below so you can go see that um, walkthrough. I am using the absolutely gorgeous collection Ooh La La Patisserie from Country Craft Creations, and today we're going to be making a wonderful little album, a really great recipe album, and we're going to be doing my configuration style pages where I take one basic scoring, cutting, and then I kind of transform it into five absolutely different pages. So um, we're going to go through that today. We're going to do the tutorial today. Now, I am going to talk about the cover. I'm not going to actually show you how to do that. I'm just going to talk through that. I did that with the, with the um, walkthrough as well. I'm using the lay flat cover method to make my album cover. And for that, we are going to need a few things. I'll talk about that in a minute. But then let's talk about the decorations. So the decorations here, I used gold mirror paper from Country Craft Creations. And then here is the cardstock here. I didn't ink anything because I wanted it to stay really pretty and clean. So I did not ink my papers at all. This was a tag from the paper collection that I just cut down to three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And I put foam tape on the back of it, put it on gold mirror paper and raised that up a little bit. So then the gold mirror paper was four by four. So pattern paper, foam tape on top of the gold mirror. And then this piece here is a piece of chipboard that I covered with cardstock. And I'm gonna insert a couple pictures in just a second and I'll kind of that'll kind of show you kind of the process of how I did that. But I basically wrapped the chipboard like I would for an album cover. And then I just wrapped the fabric around that and then I adhered that onto the album. I did use hot glue to do that because I really wanted to make sure that the layers of the fabric and the layers with the cardstock and everything um, adhered well. So I did do that. So let me insert those pictures here so you can kind of see that process. Then I used enamel dots that were left over from a previous design team package. And um, I, that was one of my goals was to try and use some of this stuff up. And I thought the, co the colors actually matched really, really well. So I did that. Um, the fabric that I used is this Prima embroidered fabric sheet that you get three 12 by 12 sheets in each package. And I did buy this from Country Craft Creations. Um, when I was there in October. And then also the lace that I used on the spine, I'll show you that in a second, the ruffle lace trim from Prima. I bought that at Country Craft Creations as well. Now what I ended up doing with that, let me open the cover here. And we'll just talk that through real quick. I did not put any pattern paper or anything on the cover. I left it with the white artisan cardstock that I used for the base of the book. And you can see this trim, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. But I cut it to length and then I did have to trim off some of the, the width of the tool. So I trimmed it to three quarters of an inch so that it would fit on the spine because I wanted two pieces that kind of start in the middle and work their way out. So it measured about three quarters of an inch from the white lace part here to the end of the, the tool is where I trimmed it. And what I ended up, how I did that, let me show you how I did that. Let me shut this book for a second. And then, um, I just grabbed my ruler and obviously I'm not going to do this in right here on my surface, but um, what I did was I measured, put it as straight as I possibly could and put that three quarters of an inch line on the white. And then I got a rotary cutter, my fabric cutter. And again, um, you know, of course have a craft mat down and then I just cut that off and that trimmed it to three quarters of an inch, which fit the spine of my book perfectly. So that was really easy. And then the other thing too, is I used the hot glue gun on that as well to make sure that this adhered really, really nicely. So, um, I used hot glue underneath the chipboard here for my decorative piece. And then I used hot glue under the pearl 
and the white here to glue it onto my spine. But the rest of it, you know, is like nice and fluffy. You can see that it's really pretty. This was one of the cut aparts I backed on um, cardstock. So I did use some cardstock from my stash, but I did um, figure out what colors um, they match in the My Colors um, papers. So these actually came from my stash, okay? But I matched them. I have a swatch that Bobby made me and it's really awesome because I can kind of look. And one of my goals with my tutorials from now on is to try to make sure if I use a colored cardstock, I want to tell you what colors my colors has. So when you go to Country Craft Creations, you'll, you, if you want to exactly copy what I did, you know which colors to get. Now, Country Craft Creations also, if you're a member of Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, has a file that will match the Country Craft Creations exclusive paper collections to Artisan Cardstock Colors and My Colors Cardstock Colors. So you can go download that. I did do that. And... Um, I will add to it as I can, or as I need to, as the new colors come out. But I made a little notebook here so I can go ahead and um, look those up. So I'm really trying hard to, you know, make sure that, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you some extra colors. So you can either, you know, pick the colors that I use or you can, you know, choose some different ones if you don't want to use what I used. So that all being said, the colors that I used in this paper collection that will match with my colors are yellow, my colors sweetie pie, my colors grasshopper, and my colors Atlantic shore. So those colors will work with this book and this is what I used um, for my book. Okay. So I wanted to let you guys know that. So that's the cover. So again, the lay flat method, um, I cut the gold mirror here at, let's see, the cover, I should tell you the covers here. Man, oh man, I never get my ruler right the first time. So they're seven and a half tall. The front and back covers are six and three quarters wide. The spine is three inches, okay? The gold uh, mirror paper, six and a half by seven and a quarter. And then the pattern paper I cut at six by six and three quarters, okay? The and the chipboard frame is a four and a half by four and a half. The gold mirror is four by four. And then again, the cover um, pattern paper, which I took from a tag, is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Okay, so that's how I did that. Um, so let's go to the tutorial. And I think what we're going to do is start with our pages. And then we're going to go through each page separately and I'll show you exactly how I put them together and we'll talk about that. Um, there's a couple things you're gonna need. So each page requires one piece of 12 by 12 paper and we're going to score them all the same way. So I'm gonna show you on one because all five are gonna be scored exactly the same way, okay? So 12 by 12 paper, you're gonna put it in your scoreboard. You're gonna score at one half and three quarters. The one half will give you your binding piece and then we're um, going to do the three quarters because that gives you a quarter inch gusset piece that kind of helps with the page flip. Since we're building onto these pages and we have lots of flaps, it does help with the pages with their turning. Okay. And this will be bound with kind of like a waterfall or an L hinge type binding. Um, so anyway, on the 12, score at half and score at three quarters, all the way down. Then we're going to go to six and three quarters and score, okay? So half, three quarters, six and three quarters. Then we're gonna turn it and we're going to score at two and a half and nine and a half, okay? That is all we're gonna do. We're gonna do that for five pieces of paper. So then, what you're going to do, I'm going to put my scoreboard away for just a sec, is let's work on the cutting. So we're going to cut these all the same to start, and then we'll tweak a few of them as we go, okay? So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to cut our hinges. Now, I'm going to turn it so I can see it. This middle piece here, that's the page height, we're going to cut straight up, 
on both those scores through the half inch score up to the three quarter inch score. I'm gonna do that for both of those, okay? And then the top piece and the bottom piece, so these two little flappies here that are only two and a half inches, we're gonna miter those. Okay. Like so. Then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna cut this score line out. So you wanna go just slightly over on each side of that score line. I'm having a hard time seeing because of the shadows here, sorry. I'm moving it around a little bit, probably making you dizzy. All right, so I'm just gonna cut like a little teeny tiny thin sliver out just to get rid of that score line, okay? Just a little teeny tiny piece. I'm gonna cut that up. And then what you can do is you can fold your paper and then you can snip that off, all right? And it'll make it nice and straight, okay? So you can see we have just a really nice little sliver there. It's not gonna matter in anything and it won't hurt with your pattern papers as far as you know matting and all that stuff. It's just a very, very slight. Cut that score out thing. And while I'm trying to find the score line, I hope you guys are staying nice and safe. I know that basically the whole country has been snowed in. Um, where I live, it's ridiculous when it snows. The town just doesn't do what it should with handling it. The climate, or not as far, oh, not the climate, but the terrain, the way that things are here with the hills and everything, it just creates an absolute nightmare here. Um, we're safe, we're good, but um, yeah, it's been really rough. Okay, so <laughs> first page is done. So you're going to do all of your pages the same way. Okay. So with this first page, what we're going to do is we're going to create flaps that go to the front and they're going to actually get glued here for pockets. We're going to incorporate those hinges there. And then we're going to use, or I used a cut apart piece here that kind of closes that pocket. So it's just glued here and glued here. It makes this really cute peekaboo window. And then you can put your tags in here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to fold your pockets. Now, um, you're gonna fold your scores. So the top pieces here are gonna go in and they're gonna create that hinge, okay? So don't worry that it has a double hinge there. It doesn't matter, okay? This is going to be for our binding. So we'll fold that back. Okay, fold it on both sides. Sorry, I'm turning it around a lot. I don't know why the shadows are so bad today. I'm gonna fold those. So that's your binding, the half inch, and then you have your quarter inch gift space, and then you're gonna fold these two in at that three quarter inch mark, okay? Does that make sense? Can you see that good? And then those will fold down, and then that is how you're going to um, close that side of the pocket. All right, so I did use a corner trimmer. You can use anything you want. I did a fancy one just because I thought that, you know, the the papers were cute and I really liked it. So I'm just gonna corner edge those and then you'll have to remember to do that with your pattern papers as well. Okay, and I'm going through all of the layers. It's just fine, okay? So you should have something like this and we're just gonna glue that down. So. Let me grab my glue here. And this is gonna be a quick tutorial. I'm not gonna um, do all the pattern papers and stuff. There's really only um, two places where we have to put pattern paper down first. And that's on the covers, which we'll talk about towards the end of the tutorial, okay? So that's where that goes, all right? And then what you're gonna do is, let me grab a scrap of paper here. So to avoid a little bit of confusion, let's go ahead and just fold this page back. This page is gonna go to the back, 
like so. Okay. And then we're going to just fold those flaps to the inside. So we'll, we'll kind of have the base page done here. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So you should have something that looks like this. So we have these little tabs here glued onto our page. We have our hinge. We have the other part folded to the back. Okay. So we're going to just do that for now. So you can kind of focus on this page. So then this is where I took a cut apart. And this is just an example. Um, the, and then I just, after I put pattern paper on the flaps, then I just glued those here. And then that created a more sturdy pocket for my tags. Okay. So just like that. So whatever one you pick to do that, just back it on cardstock, put your pattern paper on your flaps, and then put that down. So then the pattern paper that I used on the inside, I just cut a whole entire piece. I cut it an eighth inch smaller than the page. So the page is now six inches by seven inches, okay? And I cut it at five and seven eighths wide by six and seven eighths tall. And I slid that underneath there. It'll cover up those tabs that we use to glue here. You'll have this peekaboo piece here, and then you'll have that on the top. Okay, so that's how I did that. And then I just took one of the cut aparts and backed it on cardstock. And then one of the tags backed it on cardstock. I did set an eyelet and seam binding and then put that in there like that. And that creates that. So then on the back of this, we did this. So what we did was, let's turn this page over. We'll get rid of this for just a second. This is going to be a flip. And this is going to be a pocket. Now what I did, you can do it two different ways. So you can add your pattern paper to this page. And this page here is five and a quarter wide. So you would cut it at five and an eighth by six and seven eighths for your pattern paper. And then you could glue the sides down. I chose not to do that. I made hinges so that I could go ahead and use the whole width of the pocket and not worry about it taking up space. And then that way, I also didn't really need to cover this with pattern paper yet until I got the pages assembled. So I cut pieces that were one inch wide, scored them down at a half, and then these are two, in, two and a half inch pockets, excuse me. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my trimmer and I'm gonna cut them just shy of two and a half, okay? Just shy of two and a half. You can see it's just a little teeny tiny bit, like a sixteenth of an inch shorter. And then we'll fold and burnish. And then we're gonna miter those corners and we're just gonna create a hinge, okay? And we're gonna add those. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. And grab my glue. I'm gonna put glue on one side first. Doing this a little sloppy since this is a uh, demo kind of project. And I'm gonna put that down here, right in the middle of that pocket. Do the second one. This is what I did with my hinges. So I did want to make sure that I used all of my pocket. You don't have to. That's my preference. If you want to just glue that bad boy up and do that, you can totally do that as well. Okay. Put a little glue, a little glue, and then fold that up. And then that will be the pocket. Okay. Grab my little wipey here. There we go. Should get a clean wipey so I don't mess up my paper, right? That's what I should do. Okay, so there's that. And then this created a flap. On this flap, I did a photo map. So I chose two different pieces of paper, okay, here. So the blue here is four and a quarter by five and three quarters. The pink is four by five and a half. And so I put pattern paper on the flap and then I glued that right to the top of the flap. And then I went behind it and then I measured 
and then I cut another piece of pattern paper to go behind it. So this one here is three and a half tall by four inches wide. Measure this just in case you get it a little off. I eyeballed this and then I went back here and then I measured this blue space to make sure that the mat fit. It's a little bit less wide or less tall, I should say, than it probably should be, but it worked fine. But anyways, just measure that particular pink piece back there. I did corner edge these, so do that before you put your pattern papers on, okay? And then this creates a nice pocket that you can use the whole side for. So that's what I did there. So let's go ahead and, before I forget, we'll go ahead and corner punch the top here so that we can get it as close as possible to what I did. All right, put my hinge over here, and then that'll be like that. So you're gonna have a flap here. Let's just go ahead and pretend that this is our flap. We'll go ahead and put a post-it note here just so you have that visual, okay? Then we're gonna open this up, and this is going to be a layout. And on that layout, I did the pattern papers, okay? And then I used one of the cut aparts from the collection here, and I just cut it out. I didn't use any extra cardstock. I just cut it out, put it on the page. I glued it on the two sides, and that created my pocket, okay? So that is what we're doing for this page. So layout, and then I use the cut apart here on that page. That's page one. So page two. Page two is going to be kind of fun. Let me get this out of the way. I am getting a mess. I've got like a bunch of tutorials and shares and stuff that I'm trying to film today because today is my day that I work on that. So I've got kind of a mess going here. So this is a graduated pocket on the front and you'll have a pocket here and then you'll have a pocket here. Okay, and then when you flip this page over, you've got your flap on the back, which I cut as an angled pocket because I, I wanted to. And then I created a pocket here and then a belly band here. So here's what we're going to do with that one. We're going to grab our paper and we have already scored it. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our cuts just like I showed you earlier okay so we're going to cut those out and i probably should have already prepared this since we're going to do them all the same anyway right and we're going to do this angle those and cut straight up that middle one don't miter this one because that's how we're going to attach it to the book and you don't want that edge mitered so we're going to cut straight up to that three quarter inch score line and then miter the two little two and a half inch pieces, okay? And then we're going to cut this score out. Just like that. So this is this is this the the same thing we did before. This is exactly the same thing we did before. Okay, and I'm using practice paper too, so you'll notice this is not artisan cardstock. Um, I would recommend artisan cardstock because with the configuration albums, when you you know fold them in opposite directions, the artisan actually works really really well because it does not rip, it doesn't tear. Okay, so I'm just folding those so I can cut those little pieces off. Okay. So you should start off with your page like this. And then the other thing that I usually like to do is just go ahead and fold your binding piece and just get that done. And because I'm not using Artisan for this practice piece, I'm just being very, very careful. Of course, you want to be careful with your Artisan too, but especially with this, it's kind of a flimsy paper and I want to make sure I get my scores even. So that's good. Okay. So what we're going to do now after, so you've got your page prepped. We all prep all of our pages the exact same way. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the two top pieces off. Okay. You can do your straight edge. You can do, um, you know, your trimmer, whatever. I'm just going to cut these off and we're going to save those pieces because we are actually going to use them. Okay. 
So cutting off those two pieces. Straight across, okay? Save those two pieces for later, okay? So now what we're going to do is let's fold this page to the back and get it out of the way, okay? All right, so you should have a piece that looks like this. You got this page that's folded to the back, okay? And this is where our graduated pocket's gonna be, okay? So if you look at the book, again, taking these out so that I can show you, you got a pocket here and a pocket here. So here's what we're gonna do. This pocket's gonna fold up and create a pocket. So let's fold this hinge in, okay? And then we're gonna grab another hinge, Sorry about that. That was loud, wasn't it? Little under two and a half. I'm going to do a couple more while I'm at it so I don't have to do this again. We do need a couple that are going to be two inches for later, so we'll just do that. And we'll make one like that for now. I'll put these off to the side, but we need one of those for now. And we're going to fold and burnish. Cut our angles and make sure that you cut the angle so that the point of the angle is at the fold. So they look like that. Otherwise, they don't work very well. And then put your glue on. Put this here. Oh my goodness. I think I need to eat. I think I need to take a break and eat. My stomach is really protesting. All right, so you have that pocket and we're gonna glue that up, all right? So again, more glue. And glue that up. Okay, so that's the bottom pocket done. Okay, like that. So then take this longer piece that we cut off, the one with the hinge, we're gonna take that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold that hinge and we're going to do that. We're gonna take our scoreboard, I'm gonna use my little teeny tiny one here. I'm gonna put it in here and I'm gonna add another half inch score. So let's go ahead and do it this way. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm gonna just add a half inch to the bottom, okay? And that's going to create the bottom hinge. Okay, so we have one over here and we'll have one down here. So we're gonna go ahead and um, miter that like so. Okay, so now we have a bottom hinge. That's, well, actually it's not even a hinge. When we do this, this is actually just gonna tuck in the pocket. So it's just basically kind of a, um, a guide. Let's put it that way, it's a guide. Then we're gonna take another one of these guys and we're gonna use the two inch because now we've just taken a half inch off that. We're gonna use that two inch piece here and make that little hinge and we're going to do that and do that make our little hinge for the side or yeah for the side of the pocket and I'm going to turn this over I'm going to add this to my pocket on the inside and again I really want to be able to utilize all the space that I have for my recipe cards right Okay, so we have this. What this is gonna do is that angled piece is going to tuck in that pocket right just to that score line. So the score line is just underneath that edge of the pocket. And we're gonna glue that down and that's gonna be our second little divider pocket, okay? So just tuck that in there so you don't see that score line anymore. So you only wanna tuck it in about a half an inch, okay? And then you can put the glue on there. So um, again, just put glue on the two side hinges only because the other one's not even going to get folded. It's just going to be a guide. And we're going to just slide that in and glue that down. Okay, match up your edges nice. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, and that's how we kind of strategically use that one page and created a whole new pocket. So now we should have a pocket here and then a pocket here. And when I cut my pattern paper to cover this, I took a strip of the pattern paper and I cut it at 
five and seven eighths wide. Yep, five and seven eighths wide. I cut the bottom piece off to fit here. So the bottom pocket is two and three eighths inches. Okay, and then I wanted to make sure that I had enough to cover kind of some hinges and stuff. So I cut this piece here at four and three eighths and I put this piece all the way into the pocket. And then the rest of it I used to put this piece in. So this is the back of this piece. Does that make sense? So cut off your bottom piece first, cut off this piece next, and then the rest of it you can get and go into the pocket. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. Ask me. But then that creates those two pockets. They both go all the way down to the bottom and it makes a great pocket. So when you turn this over, now we're going to do this angled pocket, okay, with a belly band, okay? Angled pocket with a belly band. So we're going to take our book. We're going to flip it over. So we've got our flaps here, okay? And what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our cutting mat here. And what I ended up doing was I just, just use the grid on your cutting mat. If you have that, okay, measure two inches down. Let me make sure I said that right. I have my notes here. Just wanna make sure I have my notes. Do, 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 do. Yep, two inches down. And I'm gonna go from the corner of the page, so right here where that score is, and I'm gonna line this up. I'm gonna turn my ruler the right way. It would probably be the... Ay, ay, ay. I think I need more food. Okay, it's early. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna line that up with the corner of the page, two inches this way. Hope you can see that. I'm gonna slice that off, okay? And that's gonna create the angled pocket, okay? So that angled page. So this piece is garbage, you can throw that away. And then you're gonna need two more two and a half inch hinges. So I'll just use this as a measuring guide here. We'll cut a few of these. Okay, so I have my two hinges. We're gonna create this pocket, grab my glue. I actually was reaching for my tea, that's kind of weird. So I'm gonna take the pocket, this little flap here on the angled page here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Then I'm gonna do this. Like so. Okay, so I've got my little pieces there and glue those down, glue that up and then that creates our pocket, okay, on the front of our angled page, okay. And then you're done. So I have the angled pocket here, you can see that, and then um, when you do your pattern paper, the easiest thing to do is cut your pattern paper at five and an eighth wide by six and seven eighths tall, and then I'm gonna put it in my pocket and I'm pushing it all the way down, okay. And then what I'm doing is I'm gonna look for that edge of the page here and I'm gonna take my um, ruler and a pencil, okay? And then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line that up to the edge here so it's, it's like at the corner of my pattern paper and then I'm trying to match the white part of my page here so that I have a little bit of a, um, like about a 16th inch of a space between my pattern paper and my page, okay? Hope that makes sense. I don't know how to, I don't, I'm not saying it very well. But anyways, and then cut that angle off and then that should give you the proper mat for this page. Oh, can't get it in the pocket. There we go. Okay, there it is. So stuff that in there, and then when you do it, then that should be, you know, pretty darn perfect, okay? So before you glue this down, if you want to, use that angle again, and then do your pattern paper for the next side, because you're gonna have to repeat for the next side. So just flip it over, put it on another piece of pattern paper, cut that angle, and it should be good to go, okay? So that's how I did that. So you do want to put your pattern paper on the back, first 
On the front, it doesn't much matter. You can come back to this later. But on this one, you do want to do this first. And the reason why, let's glue this down, is because now we need to create our belly band for the back of here. And that one is a simple glue on one because I wanted to utilize the piece that we cut off. So that's pretty much the only one that I just, you know, flat glued down on top, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll glue that down. That should be good. It's off a little bit, but this is a demo piece, remember? So here's that piece that we cut off. So what I wanna do is trim this to an inch and a half. Just cut that off. I lo I broke my my little guard to my cutter here. And I really just don't want to buy another one. So <laughs> there you go. And then I just found the midpoint and glued that down. Okay. So I'm going to just put glue here and glue here. The, the book is like seven inches tall. So I'm going to go to like the three and a half inch mark here. Whoops. No. That's not what I did. What did I do? Sorry, 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 sorry. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I actually... Yeah, I tried to center this, and you're gonna have to make sure that when you glue this down, that you glue it down. I tried to center it. So it is about, eh, roughly one and three quarters inch up. Okay, and then just glue that down. Okay, and then if you have a little bit of overhang, which is fine because you really don't wanna glue this into the spine. I'm trying to keep it away from the spine so that it closes properly. You might have a little overhang. Just grab your scissors and trim that off, okay? And then you've got your belly band piece here, okay? So that's how we did that. And then this page here, I left plain and put pattern paper on for a photo mat, okay? So that is page two. Page three is the page that I did the flap here, and you can see that I put the short page to the front this time, okay? And then I did the flap here, and then this is where I just wanted to put something on the flap, so I took this recipe card, cut it out at six by six, and then I just cut it into two pieces that were three inches wide, and then I created a tag that is six and an eighth inch tall, and it is six and a quarter inch wide and then folded that in half, okay? And then that matted the first two pieces, okay? So again, this is a six by six pattern paper cut down at three, and then this is six and an eighth by six and a quarter um, for the cardstock. And then I scored the cardstock down at three and an eighth. And so that matted that perfectly. I did add a magnet here to close it. Now, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, if you want to put just another photo mat, whatever, but that's how I did it. I covered the flap with the pattern paper first and then added that, just glued that right on top and then created it so it has like a little opening there and then it flaps up. On the back of here, on the back of whatever you put here, um, I just measured it, cut the cardstock to fit and then I added the little cut aparts here. Okay, did the flap um, and then left this plain. And then this page will open up and then I folded a flap up to create a pocket, used more hinges. And then this one here is one of the recipe cut aparts that I just glued on three sides to make a pocket. I put it on cardstock, glued it on three sides, and then it made a tuck pocket. Okay, so that's how that page goes. And then on the back of it, we folded the flaps in and created another pocket like we did on page one. So that's what we're going to do with this one. So this is super easy. And you know what I didn't do? Nope, never mind. Never mind. Didn't have to. 
scratch that, reverse it. So on this one, let's fold the hinge first, the, the page um, hinge attachment binding. Okay. And let's do that. Mm, I didn't do that very well, did I? There we go. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time this morning, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, so binding here. The smaller page is flipping over to the front. Okay. We're going to have the top flap that comes down, and that's where you're going to do whatever attachment that you want up here. Okay. I'm going to trim that little nubbin off because that's going to bug me. All right. And then the bottom flap on this small page is going to go to the inside and create a pocket, right? Okay. So right now I've made that, I've folded up that pocket piece here. Okay. The two top ones are going to fold down. Okay. We're going to keep those little hinge pieces because we're going to use them to create that pocket, right? So those are going to fold to the back. All right. And this is what we should have. Okay, so let's do this again. Your page is open like this. We're going to fold this to the front. This is going to come down, and the bottom page is going to go up. Okay, so it'll make a pocket. So you have a flap on the top, pocket on the bottom. These two are going to fold to the back. We're going to deal with those in a little bit. Okay, and that's what we've got. So on this page, on the front, um, this is where I just... I did my little corner punch here. You can round it, do a decorative punch, whatever you want. And then this is where you're going to put that tag. Okay. And then we're going to open this up and this is going to be a pocket. I'm going to go ahead and make hinges. I got a couple ready. Well, kind of ready. If I can get my fingers to work. <laughs> this is fun. The snow here has been crazy, like I said. And where we live we got completely like snowed iced in for a couple days and it took us a while to get out nobody in our neighborhood got out <laughs> it was crazy it was crazy we don't deal with this stuff in our neighborhood in our area at all they don't plow they don't use the same chemicals that everybody else does they don't use salt so it brings our town to a complete standstill Businesses were shut down. People couldn't get around. The commute when the snow started was horrendous. People were stuck in their cars literally overnight, like 12, 13, 14 hours. Some people abandoned their cars and went and found hotel rooms. It has been unbelievably bad here. So I'm glad that it's over <laughs> but we got the most snow in february that we i think have ever had according to the news so yeah it was fun all right folding those up okay and then that's your pocket that should fold nice so you can go back and reburnish that fold but that should fold really nice because we did cut that little sliver out that'll help with the pockets folding okay and then on the inside here is where i put that cut apart, all right? Um, and then glued it on the three sides to make the pocket, okay? So that's the first page. And then the second page here, we're gonna do the same thing we did for that front of page one where we're gonna make that kind of peekaboo pocket. So I'm gonna fold these in, all right? And all the way in, we're gonna fold all of those scores in. Um, I'm going to corner around Because I wanted to. You can go right through that if you want to trim the um, the hinge off. You totally can. And what I mean by that is just kind of shorten it up and match it with the corner there of your punch. However you want to do it, it's totally up to you. We're not going to put a hinge here because we're going to use that piece on top. So I'm going to grab my glue again. I'm going to glue this down. 
All right. And just close that end up. All right. And then that way, your tags won't fall out either into your binding, which is nice, because that's kind of going to be a stopper when you put your tags in. You know, that'll prevent your tags from coming through, right? And then this is where, again, we're going to get some sort of a cut apart. You can use anything you want. Skinny. Um, you can use a three by four cut apart. You can do whatever, but you have this nice little peekaboo area as well. And then on that on that page is where I showed that this pocket can be used two ways. So you can use it this way, which I really liked the tags from the collection. They're just the perfect size. I didn't cut them down. I just cut them straight out of the pattern paper, added an eyelet and a seam binding. So then you have some fluff on the end of your page, right? And it looks really pretty. But then you can also use your pocket to tuck things this way as well. So I wanted to share that. So that's this particular page, okay? So the front of page three, this is where I put that tag recipe because I wanted to use that. And this was a fun way to make another interaction. And then it has the flip up and then you open it up and you have the two pockets on the inside, okay? And then you have the um, pocket on the outside, okay? So that is page three. And again, right now what, we, what we're looking at is we have the flap and that's where we put the tag then the smaller page opens up you have the pocket here that we created and then one that you can create out of a cut apart okay and then you turn that page and then you have the really fun kind of peekaboo pocket there okay so that is page three page four page four is fun so on the front um i put the small page to the front and then I just used one of the paper cut aparts with the recipe on it because I really wanted to use that recipe. And um, again, <laughs> I loved it. And I just think the yellow in it is just gorgeous. So I wanted to use it. So I backed it on some cardstock and just put it on there. Then on the inside, we're going to fold these things up so that they have pockets on the inside. And I'll show you how to cut that here in a second. Okay. And then on the back, we're just going to have a simple pocket. All right, and what we're gonna do in order to create that simple pocket is we're gonna cut the tops off again, okay? So you'll notice that we have no top flaps. Um, we're just gonna cut those off and then we'll use one of the pieces to create this pocket, okay? So we have our page prepared, okay? So I'm just gonna cut the tops off. So we'll do that first and I'm just gonna cut that right on the score line there so I can cut that out. I can see it in the shadows here. All right. I love configuration albums because I just think it's so much fun to figure out how you're gonna do everything. <laughs> I just love this. All right, so front page to the front or the small page to the front, I should say. Let's go ahead and fold our binding. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we got our binding folded. We have our page to the front, okay. Then the pockets are gonna go up and they're gonna go to the inside and then we're gonna cut that nice little angle. Okay, so I'm gonna fold that, and make sure everything's even. Okay, so this hinge we're gonna utilize to close that pocket on this side. We're gonna have to add a hinge here. So let's go ahead and just do that while we're thinking about it. So I got another two and a half inch hinge. And you know, the hinges came out of the scraps. So when you make the covers, please save your scraps because that's where these can come from. So you don't really use a whole lot of paper in this project. It's really kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna take my hinge on the smaller pocket on the outside, put that down. Okay, 
So then what we're gonna do, we need to cut those. So we're gonna fold this in half with the pockets on the outside, okay? So the pockets are folded down. We're gonna fold our pages. And then what we're gonna do is use our mat again. I'm gonna line this up. I'm gonna grab my ruler and my straight edge knife. And I'm going to cut an angle at the one inch mark from the corner there, okay? So I'm just gonna put it at the edge of that pocket, line that up at one inch and cut that. Okay, these are garbage pieces, so go ahead and throw those away. And voila, you have your pocket. So we're gonna glue those down, and then we will have our inside pockets that have that angle, okay? And again, I'm just doing this kind of quickly like so okay all right now to get the mat for this page so to get the mats for these pages you're going to need pattern paper that are two and three eighths inch tall this one will be um five and seven eighths wide right yeah five and seven eighths wide and then five and one eighths wide for the smaller page okay so i'm going to do the same thing i did before i'm going to lay this down did I not trim that right? I didn't. Hang on. I cut a little more off the top there. Let's make sure that one's right. Yep, that one's right. Okay, so putting it down on our pocket where we're going to have it. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before where we're going to use our ruler and our pencil and we're gonna line up those um, pocket pieces. So let me put this underneath so you can kind of see. So we've got the edge of our pocket up here and the edge of our pocket down there. I'm just gonna line that up so it's about, you know, 16th of an inch. I'm eyeballing it and I wanna make that angle, okay? So I think that'll work. So I'm gonna draw that pencil line and then I'm gonna take my scissors, cut that pencil line, okay? And that should give me the angle that I need to mat my pocket. So if I lay that down, that should look really pretty, right? Then what you can do is the angle should actually match the angle for the other pocket because we cut them at the same time, right? Just like that. So then you can just take your paper and making sure that you have it in the right, you know, orientation for your pattern paper, but you can just line that up and cut that off and then you don't have to like go through the measuring and everything again, okay? These are garbage pieces. So then you have your piece that goes like this and then your piece that goes like that. That should line up just perfect. So that's how you cover those particular pockets. All right, and then you turn the page and then we have your, your front on the, or your small page on the front. We have our pockets in the middle. We're gonna turn our page and this is where we're gonna put a pocket. So we're gonna just do kind of the same thing that we had done earlier with adding another score mark so we're going to put it in here and just score it a half an inch on the long or on the short side here so we have a nice pocket bottom okay and then we're going to add another hinge so we need to make sure that this stays six inches wide which it is right here that's that top flap that we cut off we're going to utilize that and then add a hinge and then that'll create your pocket like so Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and let's cut this off at two and a half. I'm gonna do this, oh no, two, two inches. Cut it off a little bit shorter than two inches, okay? Do that the quick way. And then get your piece out there. I made probably way more hinge pieces than I really needed. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that I had enough, but yeah, you don't need more than probably two or three of those. I didn't count, actually count for sure. Sorry. <laughs> so we'll add our hinge piece to the inside of that pocket on that side, like so. Okay. Fold our other hinge pieces. All right. Like so. Okay, 
And now we have our pocket for here. Now, if you want to do the um, the tape trick and not, you know, so you don't have to put pattern paper all the way down in the pockets, this is a good time to do that. And let me show you how to do that if you aren't familiar with that. But you're going to line this up. Make sure that you're not in the scores for the folds. All right. And then open it up. So I just glued the bottom. And then if you want to put glue, or glue, if you want to put cellophane or scotch tape or whatever it's called in your area on top of that hinge what you're going to do is create a nice smoother surface so that when you put your tags and things in the pockets they won't get caught up on that bottom edge okay if you're putting your pattern paper all the way down into the pockets to cover these hinges, then you don't have to worry about that. But if you are interested in saving paper and you only want to use, you know, pattern paper on the top part here, then that is a good trick to do so that you, um, you don't waste paper. Okay. So there you go. So front of page four has the photo mat, the two pockets with the angles on the inside, turn it pocket on the back. It's page four. Okay, page five. This one's really simple. We're going to cut the paper the same way and we're going to use the flaps and we're just going to use them as flaps. So we're not adding hinges or anything. We're making this photo map pages. Um, on this one here, now you can cut these as big or as little as you want. I chose to cut this um, on the bigger side because I wanted to have a bigger photo mat on the back as well. Okay, so again, whatever piece you pick, I backed it on cardstock, I made my flaps, did my corner rounding, covered them with pattern paper, and then I added this piece on top. Then you go inside and you measure like that green space area and then cut your coordinating cardstock to um, one eighth smaller than the green, okay, to make your map. And that's what I did. And then I decorated this little piece. Um, I left the inside with pattern paper. So, um, you know, you could put a photo mat there or whatever. And then I have this flap. Now, the, the tricky part of this is to make sure that these flaps match. Because when you look at it, you don't really see that there's another flap underneath it. So, when you glue these down, make sure you glue them with the bottom one first. And then you can lay the top one down and match it up really nice and even. Okay? So... That's what I did on this one as well, on the back here. So we just are gonna use our flaps as flaps, okay? Um, whatever pattern paper you want, and I chose to cut out this piece of the pattern paper and use the bakery, because um, I just think it's adorable. So I did two of them, exactly the same size. I did the cardstock, exactly the same size. Corner around them, exactly the same. Put your pattern paper on your flaps and then glue your bottom one down first where you want it. And then when you close your flap and you go to glue this one down on the top flap, you can completely cover that up. I hope that makes sense, but that's how I did that. But then, I mean, it's just a matter of putting your mats on your pattern papers. Um, on this one here, on the back here, let me open this whole page up. I'll show you like together. So you can see on the smaller flap, I did smaller, cut aparts on this bigger one I did bigger ones you could do them as narrow as big however you want as long as they you know obviously fit on the page cover your flaps with pattern paper and add your little your add-on pieces okay now the the difference between the photo mats on this big page I chose to do a full-size photo mat here because it was so large I thought that was nice on this one here I wanted a vertical one and I just did a vertical piece all the way down onto the flap Okay, so that's the basically the only difference between the two, but they're both flap pages. Okay, so that is page five. So let's just make that really super fast and then we'll be done with that. And then we'll work on our folios and I'll show you how to cut those. Okay, our page is cut. We're gonna fold our hinges. And it's funny, as I'm doing this, I'm coming up with more ideas on what I could do with this page. It's just crazy um, 
how you can tweak things so much. Okay, so the flaps, we're just gonna use them as flaps. We don't need the hinges on this one. So we're gonna cut those hinges completely off. Okay, and let's go from this side. Okay, so we cut our hinges off. So we have our binding hinge, but we cut these ones off. Okay, so the rest is the same. So we're going to fold the big page flaps up and down. Then we're gonna fold the small page to the back. Okay, fold the flaps up and down. Okay. And then I'll show you, I'll use a post-it note and show you to demonstrate what I'm talking about with your, with your add-ons here. Okay, so I did the fancy corner punch because I wanted to. I thought it was pretty. And since this book is so pretty and so, I don't know, frilly, um, I loved it. I just, I loved it. <laughs> it was so pretty. I thought, we need decorative corners, not just corner rounding. We need decorative corners. So that's why I did that. All right. Okay, so our flaps are done. Okay. Here we go. So front of the page, we have our flaps. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about with the post-it notes, okay? So if you figure out what cut apart you wanna use, back it with your cardstock, okay? And then on the bottom flap, you need two of them. So you have to do two identical pieces. Um, I'm just eyeballing here, but I'm gonna go ahead and let's say I'm gonna glue it right there, okay? So glue it on the bottom one first. Put your pattern paper on your flap and then put that piece down. And I know it's crooked because I'm eyeballing it here, but then when you put your page down, when you grab that second identical piece, you can match the bottom and completely cover this completely and then glue it to the top. And then that way when it closes, you won't ever see the bottom one until like, oh, look, a surprise. Does that, <laughs> does that make sense? So that's how I did that. Um, but do the bottom one first. It's a heck of a lot easier to line them up if you do. That, trust me on this one. Okay, so it did the same thing on the back of that one as well. Just do the bottom one first. Make sure that you actually add your pattern papers, okay? And then um, you're done. Now, inside here, inside your fifth page, is the only kind of extra add-on I did not using a piece of the pages, okay? So this came from, this piece of uh, cardstock came from the uh, cardstock leftover from making your covers, okay? So this is a piece of cardstock that I cut to eight by three. And then I scored at one half on each side of the eight and a half on the bottom just to make the pocket. So then we're gonna fold and burnish and we're just gonna glue that on and then um, we're done with that part, okay? So that goes on the inside on the back of the larger page, okay? So again, we've got this piece that's eight by three. So when we fold it, it'll be a pocket that is seven by two and a half, okay? And I hadn't done really any pockets like this and I had a little piece, you know, paper left over from my covers, so I wanted to use this. So again, you can do the tape trick if you don't wanna put the paper all the way in. I did put paper all the way in, and then that covers not only the bottom hinge, but also the side hinges, so I kind of tend to do that more often um, than not. But if you want to, just glue that bottom one in. Make sure you don't get into the score so that your pages fold nice, okay? And then when you open it up, you can put your tape here, okay? And then, um, well, actually, let's just go ahead and do it because it's not going to hurt anything. If you do decide later to just to put pattern paper all the way in, then, you know, no harm, no foul. Everything's done, right? But if you decide not to later, if you're running out of scraps or whatever, then you can go ahead and not worry about it. Okay, 
and then just glue your pocket down. And that'll be the pocket on the inside on the big page. All right. Okay, and that's it, page five. Okay, so now let's talk about the folio pieces. Now the folio pieces are on the inside covers. So you do have to mat your your uh, cover, your album cover with pattern paper or cardstock first. I chose to use the cardstock and I just thought that was really pretty. So I did use it on the spine before I put my book pages on and I will show you how to adhere those pages. Um, so I just used the cardstock and I just thought it was really, really pretty. Um, and then you make the folio and you just literally glue it right on top. Now the folio, when you open it up, so you have two pages here, okay? And then you have, and you can see that from the inside, you have the two here and the two here. You do not need to put this tag on the front if you do not want to. I did because I really wanted to use it. Um, but you don't have to. You could leave this as a standalone, um, you know, without some sort of cover piece. But you could use a, you know, a cut apart. You could use this tag. You could do anything you want. You could put a photo mat here. It doesn't matter. So um, if you do that, what I did was I put the seam binding behind that add-on piece underneath the pattern paper. Okay, so I did cover the back with pattern paper, and that's how I helped adhere the seam binding to it. The other seam binding is on the back of this, okay? If you wanted to just use the folio, you could just put this seam binding on this page and then tie it over, okay? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, so let's go ahead. I'll close this up, and let's go ahead and make the folio. This will take a page that's 12 by 12 for each um, folio. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by scoring with the one 12 inch side here at two and five eighths and nine and three eighths. Okay. Then let's turn it and we're going to, you're going to have a score mark here and a score mark here. You're going to score at three all the way down and then you're going to score at three and a quarter just to that first score line. Okay. You're going to score at nine all the way down and then you're going to score at eight and three quarters. So just inside of that nine inch line at eight and three quarters, just down to that score line that we made here. Okay. We're going to use that as a cutting guide. Okay. So we're going to make the top and bottom flaps. If we look at this open, you see how they're less wide and that is so that the top pages will close over them really nicely and they'll fit inside really nicely. So we're going to cut off that little extra quarter inch piece. So the extra scores are basically a cutting guide. Okay. So you're going to do that. Then you're going to turn your piece completely around. Okay. So you have your first two score lines here. You have your, your little double score lines at the bottom. We got to create the score lines at the top. So you have the one at three that goes all the way down at three and a quarter, make sure that's all the way in there, at three and a quarter, score down just to that first score line, okay? And then you're going to go at nine, you're gonna go inside at eight and three quarters, all the way down just to that score line, okay? So then you should have your two scores there, two scores there, and the two scores on the top, okay? So these are the long sides that will be the outside and they don't have a double score, okay? So then we're just going to cut all these out. So you're gonna go and cut that score line up, that inside quarter inch extra score just to that score line, and then cut that square completely out, okay? And I'm trying to cut the score out as well. So you can see here's that score line here that goes all the way down, and then here's that extra quarter inch. Does that make sense? Okay. And remember, guys, I'm going to have some information in the in the directions. And obviously, you know, I can't write everything down in the directions. Um, please rewind and, you know, look at this again. Go over this again. And, you know, if, if you have questions, please let me know. I'm always happy to help. I know that sometimes I get tongue-tied. I try to edit and make sure everything's as perfect as I possibly can. But I am human. 
and it's early and you know I'm trying I'm trying the best I can I want you guys to be successful in your pro and your projects I want you to have fun doing them I don't want them to be too complicated and I know sometimes I think that things aren't complicated and they are and I'm like ah but anyway just know that you can always ask me anything anytime and um, I'm here to help okay so Grab your corner rounder before we do anything. We'll go ahead and corner punch everything. You're gonna make two of these, one for the front inside cover, one for the back inside cover. And we're just gonna go around and punch. Okay, then get rid of our leavings. So then with your piece, with the shorter, you know, narrow, extra quarter inch cut off each side piece at the top and the bottom. Fold those down. Okay. Fold and burnish. Fold that up. Fold and burnish. And then fold your sides in. And you can see when we do that, you have a quarter inch between the score and your in your folder piece here, the top and the bottom, and that'll help your folder um, fold really nicely. You'll still be able to fit lots of things in your project. Now, you'll notice that these are meant so that these match perfectly together, so just make sure they don't overlap, okay? And then this is where you can take whatever cutout piece you're gonna use, and so for the inside front cover, um, I chose to adhere it on the right side because that way, when I do that, then the bow was over here towards the outside of the book, okay? So I adhered it to this right panel, and then this is where my seam binding went, okay? On the opposite one, on the back side, I did it the opposite direction, okay? So I glued it to the left side, and then had my seam binding here. Now you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. If you wanna just put seam binding on the back here and tie it in the front with a pretty bow and then have this open, you could totally do that too. So if I had some extra stuff, let's see, oh, I do have extra stuff. I have extra stuff right here. Let's pretend, let's pretend. So if you don't even want to put a cut apart there, you don't even have to, like I talked about, okay? If you want to, then this is an extra piece of scrap ribbon from my stash. And I usually cut them, I don't know, anywhere from 12 to 14 inches, depending on how fluffy you want your bow. If you want them pretty tight, then, um, you know, you, you can... Um, go with the 12. If you like them a little more fluffy, then you can go um, with another one. But I'm gonna just line this up. I'm gonna try and find my center mark here. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. So about right here, okay. And then you can put your ribbon if you don't wanna do another cut apart. So, um, and this goes on the back of the project, okay. So I know this is really sloppy, but this is a scrap and this is my tutorial. But then you can just tie a bow in the front too. So that's the other option. Okay. And if you want to get real crazy and go without all the ribbons and stuff, then you can use magnets. So whatever you guys want to do. But there, there you go. So that you can do that. So that then will go on to the inside front of your covers. And remember just to put cardstock down or pattern paper, whatever, and then this glues literally right on top of that. And then that's how you make that. It's super simple. Um, and then just cover everything with pattern paper except for the very back. You won't have to because it's glued down. All right. So there's that. And then let's see. The last thing I wanted to share with you is how to um, glue these down. Um, so since I don't use the hinge, the hidden hinge type binding. Um, I use an L hinge kind of um, binding. I like it a lot. Um, I find it really easy to do. I've never had any problems with it, especially when using artisan cardstock. Um, haven't had any problems with it coming apart as long as you do it really nicely. You know, you use your art glitter glue. Everything works really great. But what we're going to do is pretend that this is my inside spine. Okay. So 
what I did was I cut for the demonstration, I cut a piece of white cardstock that's the same size as the spine, and then I cut a piece of uh, colored cardstock that I put on top and I matted it. So just like I would mat the inside of the spine, okay? So let's close out. You can see right there, the inside of the spine. So it's meant to have a half inch gusset. So what you're gonna do is when you have your book laid out, because we're pretending right now, okay? So we've already made our, um, you know, our book, our cover, and we're going to, this is the inside of the spine, okay? So we're gonna pretend we have our covers out here, okay? Uh, you're just going to put your ruler down and you're going to measure a half inch in with your ruler. Okay. Now, if you have, if you have these spacers from Country Craft Creations, these are half inch wide and these work really well too, because you can just line them up. You can see through them. They're great. They're colorful and you can really use them too. So either way you do it, it's a half an inch from the inside. And then we're gonna start stacking our pages like a waterfall. So you're gonna grab page one, we're gonna fold it so that the half inch piece is down and our quarter inch piece is up, okay? So we don't wanna put glue on that quarter inch piece. That's kind of our give space to help with all of our page turning. And once we get all of our pattern papers on and our tags in and our, you know, bows and whatever we're using, once it gets really fluffy, um, that will help your pages turn. And then what you're going to do is we're going to just make sure that doesn't move and we're going to glue this down and you're going to center it. And these pages are about a quarter of an inch from the top and the bottom. And right now I'm just kind of eyeballing it and I think it did pretty good. Um... And you're going to make sure that's nice and straight and then just glue that down, okay? So that should be the perfect half an inch top and bottom, okay? And you can, Art Glitter Glue does let you tweak it a little bit, so you can moosh it around if you do have to do that. And yes, mooshing it is a word. It's something my brother used to say when he was a little kid. Moosh it! <laughs> that meant move. <laughs> <laughs> so you can scooch it over, moosh it over, whatever you want to say. And then you have your first page adhered, okay? So it should look something like that. And when you bend that quarter inch piece, that's what you should have, okay? So we're just doing it like a waterfall, okay? So then you flip your next page over, or your page over. You grab your second page, and then you put your glue on that half inch piece again. And I'm kind of doing it sloppy. You don't want to do it this sloppy when you're making your real buck. Okay, remember this is my demo. And then you're going to go ahead and just glue that down. You're going to butt that right up against the one before. Make sure it's nice and glued down. And then I'm going to go in. I'm going to be really careful so I don't lift it before the glue kind of sets unless I really need to move it. And then you have your second page. Okay. Like so, okay? Repeat. Repeat. So, third page. Again, I'm just butting that right up against that. And if your cuts are really nice and straight and your scores are really nice and straight, this should line up absolutely perfectly. And again, you know, I'm using scrap paper, so... You know, you can see like bendy nubbins and all kinds of stuff. So this is, this is again, my scrapbook. I'm not going to do anything with this one um, other than show you how to make it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. All right, more glue. Okay, so this is page four. Oops. Make sure that rubs down real nice. Okay, page four goes down. Like so. Okay. Now, when you turn the page, you will notice that there is about a half an inch here. Now, I do not just continue on with my last page. Because if I do, then I'm going to see that half inch or so there. Right? And I don't want to see that. So what I'm going to do with my last page, and I didn't get those quite straight, but again, this is scrap paper too, and maybe my bends, my folds aren't that great, but um, you should have about a half an inch 
left over. So what I'm going to do with my last page is I'm going to actually just glue this. Instead of putting glue here and then gluing it down like I did the other ones, I'm going to glue it right on top of that one. And then that will glue the page down and it will preserve this pretty half an inch on the other side. And then this is the beauty of it. If you get it, if you get things a little bit crooked or whatever, you can kind of manipulate this page just a wee bit and kind of, you know, like straighten it out a little bit or whatever. Um, you can cover it with patterned paper on the spine and it's going to be perfect. I like that. Okay. So then when you do that, then you have your nice edge over here, just like you have your nice edge over here. And it should work out pretty perfect. Okay. And we'll just make sure we burnish and then our fold can go this direction and we're good to go. Okay. So then that's what you should have when you open up your page. Okay. So you can see the spine there and then you have a real pretty section on either side and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So that's how I bind my pages into my album. So again, this is pretending that this is the inside of our spine. Okay. So that's how I do it. Um, so that's the tutorial. I think that was all of the things I wanted to show you. So, um, this again is my Ooh La La Patisserie recipe album configuration book, and it's absolutely stunning. I love the colors in this book and I love these configuration pages. I just, I just dig them. So they're really, really cute. But again, um, I'll go through this really quick. We have our folio here. We have a really cute um, peekaboo pocket here with the cut apart that helps with the closure. You turn it over, you have a photo flap here with a pocket here. And you have an opening where you have another tuck pocket that I used a cut apart there. You could also leave that out and put photos in here if you wanted to. Especially if you're using another paper collection, you know, to make this book. Because you don't have to use this paper either. You could use another great collection from Country Craft Creations and make this book. This book would be gorgeous. Um, we have our stacked pocket here. And both pockets go all the way down to the page. You turn it. You have the angled pocket that flips open. You have the pocket on the front and you have your belly band on the back. We have our cute little tag page that I used one of the recipes with and then it flips up. Then this page opens up. You have your uh, photo mat pocket here and then you have another pocket here and then this third page opens up. We have another peekaboo pocket used in a different way. So you can use it in both directions, which I think is kind of cool. We have our page here with the flip and the two inner pockets. And we have a pocket on the outside here. And then we have our flip pages here and here. And then we have our vertical pocket here. All right, and another folio in the back. So that is my album. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Like I said, I tried really hard to make this as easy as possible, and I will have a bunch of stuff in the description there for you to look at and cut guides and everything, um, links to the papers and all that stuff. If you have any questions, please let me know, and um, I will see you again soon with another tutorial. All right, so thank you, and... Have a great day. Bye-bye.